Hey, Eric. Hey, Thanks welcome so back, man. Thank you, man. I think the last time I saw you was at uh, Chris's Jazz. Yes. I was standing with Fareed Barron, and, yes, we, and that was a couple years ago now. Yeah, what, maybe about two or three years ago. Is that long? Yeah, man, time flies. <laughs> Simple as food. We're not getting older, though, right? No, we're getting better. Absolutely, I love that. Well, thanks for stopping in when you're in Philly. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me, man. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So I got a few questions for you. You grew up here in Philadelphia. I did. Right? I and did. you had to have people who influenced you who are homegrown. I mean, I know you played with the Clef Club. I mm -hmm. remember that. Uh, you played all around. Tell me, tell me about your influences. Who, who helped you out? Oh, wow. I mean, uh, uh, pianistically. Yeah. Um, uh, um, Philadelphia is rich just with the jazz and the classical music history period. So just like, a, uh, I would say, Andre Previn, yeah. um, Andre Watts. Uh, then there's the, the gentleman that taught at my music school, uh, Dr. Kevin Rogers, who hopefully sees this one day. Uh, he really inspired me a great deal. Then you had uh, Sid Simmons oh, yeah. from the jazz scene in Philadelphia, or Leibs. Sid and could coax out piece. every bit of sound. Sid just every had, the, bit of he had the vocabulary. Yeah. Man, he just... He understood the instrument, he understood the genre very well, and I learned a lot watching him play over the years. Um, hey, Kevin Rogers and also Fareed, who you mentioned, Fareed was actually one of my, my first piano teachers at the Clef Club, and uh, he taught me a lot about Bop and just how to really study and practice and stay current, and gave me a pretty good work ethic. Um, Trudy Pitts. Yeah. Um, rest in we peace. We miss her. We miss her. Trudy. Uh, um, I took some lessons with her at Community College. Um, uh, what's this gentleman name? His name escapes me, which is a crime. Um, Don Glandon. Don oh Glandon. yeah, yes. Yeah. Don Glandon at uh, UArts. He was a big influence. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, also Tom Lawton sure. at Temple University. Sure. So, yeah, Philadelphia has some great, great players, man. That's awesome. I've been touring with uh, uh, most of most of my adult life. I say starting at 21, I've been touring right. with a wide variety of artists, so, um, yeah. Tell me um, what you learned along the way. I know yeah. you were with Jill Scott. You've yeah, done lots with, of other stuff. I was with, um, I consider myself more of a boutique type of piano player, and I say that humbly, but um, I think that every artist, every musician, should really focus on what's true to them artistically, mm -hmm. and, when, and when doing so, I think that the, uh, the path becomes clear, a lot clearer, a lot easier uh, in terms of um, opportunities right. um, and just what it is you want to do, you know. So that honestly plays a, a very key part. And just for myself, someone who's, who wanted to be one of the best piano players of all time, which is an, uh, a, a goal that will never be obtained. Right. But um, having like a specific uh, technical desire, harmonic desire, and just a pianistic desire that allowed me to... Um, say no to a lot of artists that asked me to play yeah. and gave me opportunity to like really make a name for myself and share the stage with the artists that I like. I really, really enjoy playing with, uh, for instance, like a Jill Scott or like a Lauren Talese who uh, just released a record um, called Gorgeous Chaos that I had to play And Lauren's with. from Cleveland, but Lauren's, she's, she's, she's Philly now. She's Philly, she's definitely yeah. Philly roots, you know, and um, she has a record, Gorgeous Chaos, that just came out and I was lucky enough to co-write and co-produce some of the songs on the record with her. And yeah, um, and just being a, a pianist that can go from different um, genres, from jazz, which is Lauren, R&B, which is, uh, and, and hip hop, which is Joe Scott, and then to the pop world right. now, as of late. You know, just, I, I feel really lucky, really blessed. So do you have anything to say to the young pianists who feel like, I've got to pay the bills? I've got to play with this guy, I've got to play with this guy, to be seen, gotta, do you have anything to say to them? I mean, that's a reality today. I have, I have something to say. Okay. It might be a little long-winded, and, and I would like to preface it by saying this is definitely my person, my, my, my perspective. That's okay, we have an editor, we'll edit Great. it. <laughs> it's totally my perspective, um, and it worked for me. So, right. first thing is understanding, don't look, I would say don't look over the fence. Right. That's, a, that's a, something we always... Everyone has their problem with doing that, looking over the fence and thinking that the grass is greener. Mm -hmm. And that uh, if I were to do this, the opportunity would be the same as this person, which is not true. Every individual is their own specific and unique variable. And to um, don't look over the fence, um, I would say, once again, it's my perspective. Um, my grandma, she's from the South and she had this Southern saying, and it goes like this, when a task has first begun, never leave until it's done. Be a big or be a small, do a great or not at all. So if you're gonna do this, 
put your all and in all into it. Dedicate as much time as you possibly have um, and, and sacrifice everything to, to, to try and obtain it. And, and have the wisdom to know if it's not going, if you don't have the goods, <laughs> which is <laughs> because um, it's, you can't be mad at yourself for trying very hard. Right. If you try very hard. Hey, you can only give it your own. You go, you but there's no, your own. there's no guarantees. There's no guarantees in life. There's no guarantees in an awful life. I think right. my, my life is a story of, <laughs> I sometimes pinch myself like, how is this possible? This is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it keeps you humble. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, absolutely. You keep you There's a lot of talented people out there. Oh no my question gosh, it's, it's a, especially when you start traveling the world and you see that there's towns and countries and little small pockets of earth where there's immense amounts of talent. And you're like, wow, I'm just really one factor in such a big, big, big pie. You know? Well, I have more questions, but I think you kind of answered all of them oh, all really? at once. Um, let me ask you one more question sure. now. Uh, your Philly roots. Yes. Uh, we've talked about Philly a little bit, but the first time you and I met was how long ago? 19 years ago here at this, <laughs> this uh, amazing, amazing piano. I think you were three and I was five, right? Uh, I think I was like maybe six. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were nine. <laughs> but uh, we, and here at Cunningham Piano, mm -hmm. you know that we want to support young, oh, talented man. people. It's not, I mean, if somebody comes in and they're just, being they're just ugly, yeah. Yeah, being, being ugly or, or being trouble, we'll throw I, them out. That's not that, what I'm talking about. But... Um, when kids come in who obviously have talent, mm -hmm. who you did 19 mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. did I ever throw you out? Never. Yeah, might, it might happen today. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's still early, so let, yeah. I'm, let my cards <laughs> right. But um, when I go uh, to different <clears throat> places around the world, I tell people that I esteem the city of Philadelphia so high, and I tell them how much I love it. And I think this is a place that they should move to. It's a place where I think their artistry would, would flourish. Um, my earliest memory and the, the, one of the things that at the cornerstone for my appreciation for Philadelphia is the fact that I was able to come into a piano company like this. Come check out P Cunningham Piano Company, you'll see like, <laughs> it's the last place you'll think that a kid from the urban city should just walk in and just be allowed to practice on, especially the way um, modern media, you know, portray the climate of the country. But to have that, uh, that opportunity at 14, years old and there were times when they knew I was cutting school <laughs> and well maybe they didn't know I was cutting well, we school. We didn't know that. <laughs> not until today. Yeah, yeah not until today which is why I might get thrown out. But no there are times when on half days from school yeah. <laughs> I would uh, I would come in and they would just let me pick up any uh, back then Estonia was really popping so I really yeah. like the Estonia pianos and they would let me just sit on the pianos down here in this uh, showroom or upstairs and just practice and really refine and hone in my technique and and in fact, you know what? You probably helped us sell a piano or two. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, right. Where's my commission? <laughs> we'll, talk about we'll, we'll mail it to you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Great. That's, that's good. <laughs> but yeah, this is definitely one of the places that I, I, I attribute to uh, a rich um, experience growing up in Philadelphia musically. Great. Hey, I want to thank you again for stopping by. Thank you, man. Thanks and for having will, me. will you play? I'll, I'll play something. So um, I'll just do a little free improvisation. Yeah.